Hello and welcome. In this video I want to talk about the Felchen, also referred to as Malchus, and this is a very peculiar single-edge type of sword. A while ago I had the chance to try out one such weapon when my good friend and student Eckehart brought to training a replica Felchen. James Elmsley is the leading expert when it comes to single-edged swords of the medieval period. James has contributed to this book, which I heartily recommend, The Sword, Form and Thought. It's actually an exhibition catalogue. It stands out for being a publication that presents Peter Jonsson's groundbreaking theory on historical sword design, namely using geometrical designs to create the shape of a weapon, much like uh, medieval cathedrals were designed. And um, it's a really interesting catalogue showing a number of swords, including Peter's reconstruction, geometrical reconstruction of the shapes of these blades. And it's at the end of this book that you find the typology of single-edged swords provided by James and it includes not only falchions but also langes messer. The langes messer is a very popular single-edged sword due to it featuring in a number of historical um, fencing treatises but it's the falchion that we're going to look at now. In particular the one that Eckehart brought to training, which would be, according to this typology, a Type 2 Felchion. So the sharp edge is this one here. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, um, something that you wouldn't expect, that this particular sword uh, has its sharp edge here, not on the straight one here. There has been a lot of discussion what the purpose might be of these peculiar blade shapes. And um, oftentimes falchions are misconceived as being very clumsy. Uh, thus the theory has been brought forward that maybe sword makers wanted to marry the properties of a top heavy axe with a sword. But um, if you pick up one such weapon, uh, you will find out that uh, they actually do not handle much differently than um, a double-edged sword. Actually, uh, they are quite light and the blades are extremely thin. So it rather seems that historical swordsmiths made an effort to create this peculiar blade design but still keep the properties of a double-edged sword proper. And this is probably also why they are single edge, because you do need um, the rigidity of a thicker back edge to keep the stiffness when you make um, a blade that is so thin. If you look at one surviving example here in Hamburg, you will note that corrosion has eaten through the blade at one point, and this is because the blade is so extremely thin. When I was using Eckehart's falchion in fencing, I noted a specific detail which may shed some light on the original purpose of such blades. This sharpened bit here, this curve here, 
uh, in the bind to intercept uh, Eckerhard's sharp edge, which worked quite nicely. In, the, in a way that I cannot with a, uh, with a regular sword, um, you cannot intercept it just as nicely as you can do here. Yeah, there's a lot more pressure. In fencing, or in combat in general, when weapons meet, you want to control this crossing of blades. Now, with the shape of this weapon, um, the inward curve, the retraction of the edge towards the point, creates a protrusion. And with this protrusion, it's really easy to collect an opposing weapon. Much easier than with a straight edge. And of course, this is not only true for swords alone, it would also work with pole weapons. So a spear that is being intercepted with a falchion can be controlled using this peculiar shape of the edge, using this protrusion, and uh, thus binding against pole weapons would be a lot more easy. So it would make sense that if you have a military context where there are all sorts of uh, pole arms to have special units equipped with falchions to for instance uh, bind incoming spears so that your own spearman can use an opening created by the falchion fighter to exploit and um, stab the opposing spearman in turn and in fact if we look at period depictions of falchions you will note that in most cases the falchion fighter is wearing full armor, so he's, for instance, mail clad, or um, falchions are shown in depictions of actual encounters. Like, for instance, the Battle of Courtrai, the Battle of the Golden Spurs, which is depicted in some lively panels on the so-called Courtrai chest, where you can also see fighters with type 2 falchions. So it may well be that this particular weapon was constructed with this kind of advantage given by the blade shape in mind. And um, there, may, there may well be other purposes or contexts that we are not yet aware of, like, for instance, um, stabbing at somebody who is wearing a cattle head and using the fan-like widening of the blade to both push up the brim and then put the other air, put the other corner, the other point of uh, the edge into his face. I'm just wildly speculating, but I think um, we should take this design serious and look at possible contexts for it, because the idea that it's just a clumsy and heavy tool that's made for mm, Game of Throne like Thrones like chopping and hacking doesn't really hold any water. So I hope this makes sense to you and I see you again next time.